Hey guys, this is Spitballing with JT. We had a few audio issues at the beginning of our podcast, but the first question I asked was, so how's the clinic doing? And uh, it'll continue off with the answer. Enjoy the song. You hate it too hard, you can't handle this So you're smoking that thing, then you pass it to us With that look in your eyes so devious uh, You inhale with all you got Suck it down hard till you see and die Send your bodies on the ground, but your mind is not Cause you live in la vida smoka Now you high as a kite, kite, kite Been talking all night, night, night All night long, all night long. Let me hit that song Baby City Hall, and we'll be operational. Uh, so that's pretty much ready to go, up and running, but it's the government holding people back, like always. Well, it's the provincial government this time. we got to get a handicap ramp put in, and the landlord hasn't, uh, let's just say he uh, hasn't fulfilled his obligations yet. So people that are in handicap and wheelchairs aren't going to be allowed in, and I can't have that. Yeah, I know, we, especially in our society today, with all the war that goes on, we have a lot of handicap nowadays, more so than I think ever before. Well, never mind the worst, it's young and old. Car yeah. accidents, yeah. Uh, incidences that happen in general life. And it yeah. uh, just so happens sometimes people end up getting, uh, getting hurt and end up in a wheelchair. So uh, let's continue the conversation with what the government in BC has actually uh, allowed you to provide so far out on the West Coast. Well, the West Coast, for some reason, seems to be totally different than the East Coast. Uh, like, for example, we're allowed to extract in British Columbia. Yeah. Where we're not allowed to extract in Ontario or Quebec or the Maritimes, for example. We're BC is the only province so far that's uh, it's been challenged, been fought, and it's been won. And we're allowed to extract in British Columbia. That, 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 beyond that, that, that's ridiculous in anybody's mind, let alone the, the average person's. They don't know what to actually do about the situation. They don't know which way to turn if the only thing treatment that's available to people is opiates and, and that route of pain medication, I don't think it's really going to work. Well, <laughs> not going to say it's not going to work. It'll get rid of your pain. There's no doubt about that. But what will it do to the rest of your body? Yeah. What will it do to the addiction? How do you get rid of the addiction? You've got to go to a detox center. To go to a detox center uh, if you can afford it, that's fine if you've got $30,000 a month. But exactly. if you're looking to go government-sponsored, the waiting list is so long that uh, you'll be addicted for a long time. <laughs> they're, they're pretty much trying to get you addicted forever, period, because that's how pharmaceutical companies stay employed. It's now become... Uh, an economy in and of itself. Like, you have people keeping marijuana, like, illegal, specifically because there's cops who, for instance, a lot of them do, like, th this is the whole thing with the drug war. Like, you have cops, their job is to arrest drug offenders, some of them, not just drug offenders, but all offenders of the law, which a lot of them tend to be drug offenders. And then there you have the for-profit prisons. And then on top of that, you have the government actually paying the, 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 the private prisons to keep these inmates there for like $34,000 a year. Well, it's, excuse me, it's closer to 88000 Yeah, in Canada. In Canada. In Canada. I, I'm just spouting American facts because those are the ones that are always in the news. But it's, it doesn't seem fair and it doesn't seem normal. It's not. It's not fair and it's not normal. There was, uh, here in Canada anyways, where the Prime Minister who changed uh, some of the criminal code, 
he made changes to the laws pertaining mainly to pot, drug-related, and violent offenses. He didn't do anything about the Young Offenders Act. He didn't do nothing for the Sex Offenders Act. Uh, he only targeted the uh, pot, drugs, and more or less the guns. So there really wasn't a point to anything uh, of the, any of the laws that they put through? None. None. There was no, no other changes that were made. Like, let's face it, when you see a 14, 15 year old shooting people, something's got to be done about that. And he didn't, he didn't address that factor in any way, shape, or form. He's more worried about putting somebody in jail or smoking a joint than somebody who's driving on 80 milligram oxys. Yeah, and, then, and that's another thing that people don't even take into account. How many people out there are driving their cars on these medications? <laughs> I'd have to say quite a few. And, and for instance, I, I, I hate to be like devil's advocate in this scenario, but what would you rather have, people driving on oxys or people driving on marijuana? Well, if it came down to a choice, marijuana, because you're more attentive, you're more alert, you're not as laid you're back more sensitive as sensitive. Sure, you're not. Your you're not. You're you're more cautious to as to what you're doing, but with the oxys, for example, you'll nod out oh, oh, and, and, and fall and asleep at the wheel and potentially kill somebody. Same thing goes with alcohol. You can nod out and fall asleep at the wheel, or worse, think you're oh, you're, you're you're perfectly compensating for how much you've drinking. Uh -huh. And you're completely off the road, going crazy. So the, the, that's the other aspect that they, they they throw at you, like, oh well, you, you're driving under the influence. Like, if you're smoking pot and driving, uh, yes, that is a. It, 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 in my eyes, it shouldn't be a criminal offense because marijuana should. We're, we're in 2013. You'd think people would move past this shit. Because it's almost pointless now that to have this argument, oh, well, pot doesn't do anything. Fuck off, it doesn't do anything. It does plenty. <laughs> it does plenty. Our, re our research has taken us to certain levels that I could never have imagined. And that's the thing. There's not a, a lot of governments willing to put the money out there for the research to get done. So scientists aren't going to do the research. It's already done. It's well, already well, done. Guys, if you go under for, no, to, if you go under the Freedom of Information Act and you apply it to the government, you'll see that they've got testing done way back in the thirties. They I, know. I they actually. know what's in that plant. Yeah. They know the properties that are in there. Not just THC. THC is the only phobia part that gets you high in marijuana. Yeah. The rest of the properties that are in that plant are not addictive. So. Neither is THC. No. When someone approaches me and says, marijuana is addictive, who are you trying to kid? Maybe You're only habitual. kidding yourself. That, that's the only type of addiction I see with marijuana is a habitual forming drug. It, and it, it is because it, it involves a lot of ritual. What? If, if you're a smoker, that is. Because if you're edibles, there's no ritual in that. You just scarf one down and wait 20 minutes. Well, the difference between edibles and smoking is the phobia hits you right away. Yeah. Okay, so in the edible form, 20 minutes later will last you anywhere from four to eight hours, depending yeah. on what you're taking yeah. in a form of either baking or cooking methods, candies, muffins, cookies... Uh, it's endless to the what you can do in the edible form, which lasts longer. The other thing is, your eyes don't get red. The first thing that an officer will look at, a state trooper or an RCMP, well, the first thing they'll look at is your eyes. And if your eyes aren't red, then... If your eyes aren't red, then they're only playing a guessing game. They don't smell alcohol, so they won't know if you're high. If you've noticed, even in some of the shows that are on TV, first thing, oh, I smell marijuana. Yeah. Okay, well, the difference to that, to smoking, to in ingesting, there's two different principles there. One, it lasts longer if you eat. Mm -hmm. The smoking, the phobia only lasts, give or take, two hours, then you've got to twist up another one. Yeah. So and it, that's it, where the ritual, the, the, well, that's the habit. That's me, right? the, the so-called habit for me. And even <clears throat> the Canna family has to understand that times are changing. So, yeah. you know, money isn't what it used to be. No. And... You know, I came back to do the second broadcast for reasons that 
I'm looking for support from the Canadian public and American public to see what I can do about getting subsidization going on. Yeah. Okay. And, and without that's what this major thing about without subsidization, this program ain't gonna work. Yeah. Doesn't matter what government implements what, until they bring in subsidization, it's not gonna work. No. You'll subsidize people that are on all kinds of medications. They'll subsidize it. As oh, yeah. far as I know people uh, getting subsidized oxy. So like, well, there's people the, getting because, subsidized for methadone. I've yeah. known people 15 years on methadone. Can you imagine? One addiction to years? another. Why, why would they even go be in, like, if you, if you, that's like, a, 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 isn't it supposed to, supposed to be like a year process or something? <laughs> it's, but, an, it's another addiction. Yeah. Because it doesn't cr take away the cravings. No. It just gives you that high again. Okay. And it's the same thing as doing heroin. Yeah. Except that it's in a drinkable form that the government is sponsoring. Yeah. So if you think about it, it'll be cheaper for them to sponsor and subsidize marijuana yeah. than it will be for them to support a pharmaceutical company. Now, uh, for the, like, the treatments that you guys are going to be hopefully offering once the government gets subsidized and all this, say somebody is addicted to opiates but instead of going the methadone route they went what's far out there the i the ibogaine route that that's that's a far out idea and it, for those of you who don't know what ibogaine is it's it's uh, a concoction yeah. derived from the iboga root which makes you have a hallucinogenic response and it could last literally days where you apparently have this interaction with some entity made of bark. That's that. That's the out of the majority of research I've done on it. That's what you mostly see, and it helps you reanalyze your life. And then most of these people are finding that it's like got like a ninety percent success rate behind it uh, for actually kicking the habit cold turkey with no actual withdrawals so if they if somebody went that route like the, went down to mexico got it done came back up to here and then decided okay well i want i still need pain treatment for my injuries but i don't want to go back down that same route well there is out there once again there's out there there's other methods yeah so as stands now health canada at least in canada anyways the government is offering research and development licenses. Oh, really? Well, what the research and development licenses, what that does is it gives people like myself the opportunity to look further and deeper into this plant. Yeah. And I call it the, the plant of life because it is a God-given, it's a God-given plant. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. now, I mean, if there's something that's good out there, I cannot phantom why both the Canadian and U.S. governments don't understand that. It's good for people. It helps people. And when people say there's not enough research done on it, I got to question that too because on our website alone, yeah, there's, there's published studies from around the world that yeah. shows it. It's just not... The, what I mean by it's the, the, the research isn't done is that the public doesn't have access to that research unless sure. they go above and beyond what like because the government's not just putting that information out there for everybody to read they want to keep that to themselves keep it hidden so that you have to go file a freedom of information request and then maybe along the lines they'll they'll, they'll send you something because it's like a, a they have a, to a, a cat game almost well they have to uh, i've had freedom of information requests and i so. i say to everybody out there Turn around and apply under the Freedom Information yeah, Act and that's, learn that's more really about this plant. Thing. That's and you will see that the benefits that this plant does offer the human body compared to the pharmaceutical, quote, chemicals. Well, even depression and, and, and antipsychotics, they, the, the cannabinoids have built in antipsychotic and antidepressants in it, in the plant itself. Yet there's hundreds of thousands of suicides and murders attributed to specifically SSRIs and other medications that are, are diagnosed to mentally ill. 
patients that medical marijuana could literally stop or uh, cure it. Cure it completely. That's true. That's definitely true. And then there's nobody that, that can deny that, or, 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 or I, I'll give a million dollars to anybody who finds me one death associated to marijuana because it's not out there. There might be somebody who smoked too much pot and jumped off something stupid and then died, but I doubt there's anybody who got <laughs> high and died from an overdose. None. None. Nobody. And, and, and yet... The government will deny that fact. They'll be like, oh, no, it's addiction. It's there is the propaganda has to keep up. Okay, the thing but is... People have the internet now, and propaganda isn't holding. You have all these alter alternative news organizations. Me, you have the, the InfoWars website with Alex Jones. When he, He's all for the medical marijuana movement. He doesn't even smoke. He's the, a conservative redneck from Texas. <laughs> and he has Joe Rogan on, for instance, who's a huge proponent of medical marijuana down in California. He's been in multiple movies, The Union, uh, DMT, The Spirit Molecule, which is another movie he, he, he's a part of. Great information. But if they were to try and cross state lines with... Their medication, because Joe Rogan is, has a medical marijuana license in California, if he crosses the, into Texas, that's a felony. You can go to jail for, and, and some people for the life, if, oh, yeah. depending on, on what state you cross into. And that's something that the U.S. government and people should lobby in the states like Normal has, for example. Like, you're comparing apples with oranges yeah. when you're comparing marijuana to heroin. <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> the, Excuse me. But the, the the sad thing is, is that's the only thing that we really have to compare it to. Well, no, it, in the United it, States, yeah. it's a felony offense. Yeah. Where here in Canada, it's not looked at as a, like, let's face it, you get three felony offenses and yeah. you're gone for life. Yeah. So you get busted with marijuana yeah. three times and you're gone for life. Yeah. Now, does that make any sense to anybody out there? No. Imagine putting people in prison for pot smoking. No, and it, it makes no sense whatsoever, and it's not fair to the, the people who are just honestly, they're not doing anything, they're not hurting anybody. So, why is it that there's any stigma to it? There, there shouldn't be a stigma. Well, anymore. there is because the the government, and if we go and back to George, we go back to George Washington when yeah, he had he the grew hemp fields, hemp for and, who didn't know and that. what's wrong with hemp? You're cutting down all the trees. Well, you know what? Put a hemp tree in there. Oh, Watch yeah. what happens. Well, I, was, I, I said on the, the, the last podcast that we uh, did, there wasn't a ship that left port unless they had two barrels of uh, hemp seeds. One for their bread and food, whatever. The other one was for if they got stranded on a desert island, they could plant and plant the hemp, grow the hemp, process the hemp, remake sales and get the hell off the island now if you were to take uh, cotton how long is that going to take if you're going to use a, a paper or whatever you wanted it's take a while it's going to take a goddamn long time mm -hmm. for you to get off that island and unless the trees are, are useful on that island which chances are not but hemp will grow there hemp will grow on a desert island Sure, well, hemp will grow anywhere. You could, and in Bonneville, it literally grows. Um, my mother thought I, it, it was pot that I, I, I've been picking up hemp out of, out of the fields on my way home because I liked the leaves. This is when I was, I was like 13. I didn't smoke pot yet. I, I just knew I liked the, the shape of the leaf. It was a cool leaf. It's like the maple leaf. It almost looked like the maple leaf when, when you're a kid. It doesn't take that much of a stretch to think maple leaf, hemp leaf. I, I, I see the, the, the five petals. I see it. I, uh, for me, I saw it at least. Seven, nine. <laughs> exactly. But it, it, they were early hemp plants, so they only had five petals, these ones. So the, when I brought them home, my mother called the police, and she was just like, what, is this pot? 
to the cops, and the cops are like, "No, it's not pot. It's hemp." That they, that, and he's like, "Where'd you find it? You picked it out of the little." Your mother called the cops on you. Well, yeah. <laughs> my, my, uh, she loves you. She loves me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, she, she thought I, I, I was I, I was only thirteen, twelve, thirteen at the time. She didn't know any better, right? And I didn't know any better. I didn't know I would get in trouble. She didn't know it w whether it would get me in trouble or not. And she was just looking out for me. So besides uh, certain things on the, I guess, on the internet, because that's pretty much where everybody gets their information, like in, in today's society, what, what disinfo can you debunk? Like, there, there's a, I'm trying to think. There, there's been people who say, uh, well, I'm getting, I, I don't like I'll food. give you I, an I example. Heroin. People say pot leads to. Oh, yes. That's a really People, pot leads to heroin. Yeah, pot leads to crack cocaine. Drug. Now, how can you say that? And that's a choice. Exactly. That people make. If you want to have, you want to do heroin? Who's the one who's making that decision? Exactly. You are. Exactly. Okay, it's not that because you smoke a joint, the next thing you know it, you're a junkie. No, no. That, that doesn't, doesn't happen. That it doesn't work. Okay, that now the thing is people out there should know the difference between marijuana and heroin. Yeah. Okay, secondly, the doctors should know what, for example, Oxycontins are going to do in a 7 to 10 day use. Yeah. They're going to become dependent. Within and seven then, to ten days. That's it. And, uh, Anything longer than that, you are wired. Oh yeah, I, and, and I, I've had to, I've had personal experience with this because of my car accident that I had last summer, and I'm still getting prescribed them because I know if hey, I go off, if I stopped cold turkey tomorrow, my mom's a drug rehab counselor. I know I, I'd make it, but if I wasn't the and the, the person who I am and have the connections and know the people who I knew, I could have a heart attack. I could have a seizure. Who, who, nobody tells you that stuff. Well, the doctors don't. No. My mother told me. She's like, you can't do that. So it doesn't who's work looking, like that, Jordan. So you have to go what off. government body now was responsible for looking at the doctors that are handing out prescriptions like 180, 250, 80 milligram oxys to somebody yeah, for a month? That, that's... And... To boot, they're allowed to drive? Yeah. That's well. the sickening part to me because when you see the news, Washington news, for example, and you see a big car accident, and the, the reporter will say there might be alcohol involved. Well, did you ever stop and think that there might be pharmaceutical medication involved? And that's something that you never hear in the news, that this was caused because of pharmaceutical drugs. Exactly. You never, never hear about that. You never, ever hear because about that. Because that's, oh, you got a prescription bottle? There you go. Okay, so what do we do? Do we put pot in a prescription bottle and say, here you go? Great, that's let's do it. in California. That's well, it. let's do it. Yeah. Like, what's the, is that all it takes? Is just to put in a prescription bottle? Then I'm all in. I'm in. Let's do it. Well, I'm, uh, I've spoken to you about uh, specifically the Toronto Compassion Center and how I'm a member with them and that's where I get my medical marijuana dispensed to me and it's, it's, it's at what price ugh, outrageous prices you're talking if you want OG Kush at, at a good 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 like decent price you're not getting it there what do you mean decent pot if you want decent pot like they have it but you're you're paying like I, for OG, it's twelve dollars a gram most of the time, or eleven. Uh, and if it's a, a shitty strain of OG, it'll be like ten or nine. <laughs> and that's a shitty strain. And, and there's, think no, about there's it, no such thing. Uh, well, <coughs> if, if it's grown, if it's not grown up to par, well, they shouldn't have it then. Exactly. Like, that, I mean, that, I, I'm trying to keep the price as low as possible. I'm yeah. trying to keep it at five dollars a mark for. For for a quad, for a trip pot, like yeah. you know, no no garbage involved, no pesticides, no carcinogenics, just the best of the best. Yeah. And like you know, when you're dealing with people, and don't take me wrong, I'm not attacking the recreational user at all, okay? Because I firmly believe that everybody should smoke pot, yeah. everybody, yeah. okay? So don't take it wrong. Right now, I'm in support of the medical side of it because that's what's legal, 
and if we can be prohibition, which one day we should be able to, but I doubt it very much, because the government isn't going to change the laws. And if we can't change the criminal code, we're not going to get it legalized. There's no way. There's where the, that's one battle. The second battle in my biggest fight right now is subsidization. If the government doesn't subsidize it, then the people that are out there on social assistance will okay. not get the assistance that they need. And our government should be. If they've gotten themselves off the pills, well, they're saving money, number one. Number two, you have to look at where it's coming from, the government. Yeah. Do they want it? No, because they're already in bed with the big pharma. Exactly. And they don't want to they don't want to find a cure for cancer even though a pharmaceutical company has come out with one. Well, we've got one at New Age Medical Solutions, but you know what? If we publicize it and bring it out, the chances are the bullseye will get bigger on my back and it'll come out one day. That's all I can say. Now, if you can find a cure for cancer, AIDS, what else is in that plant outside exactly. of the high? Exactly. Can you imagine exactly. people living longer? Or better yet, can you see your grandmother smoking a joint? No. Okay, but I can see her eating a cookie or having a candy or a muffin, and, I, and I, that'll I, relax I, her. I firmly believe had my grandmother taken my advice and taken medical marijuana that she might have gone just a bit further because... Uh, my mother's probably spoken to you about that. She she passed of breast cancer, and that could have, even if it just eased the the pain that she was in, because she wasn't one. She barely would take a Tylenol. The, this woman, and she went through the worst possible pain anybody could go through, and she died due to septic. Yep. So she she went septic. Well, if you look at if you look at the scenario. Chemo, Chemo radiation, radiation go cancer. Now, <laughs> I mean, how much do people expect our antibodies to attack? Like, how do you know we've got a poison, chemo, poison, radiation, yeah. cancer. Now, there's no way in the world that our antibodies are going to pick up all of those diseases or ailments. Secondly, what are you going to do? When the doctor says, okay, and when you get home, I want you to take this pill, which could be morphine or Demerol or Oxy, and that even slows your body down even more. And then you feel worse in the morning. When you wake up, you feel sore. And not only that, your antibodies can't keep up. Yeah. So, you know, in developing certain things, which New Age Medical has done, yeah. we have developed products that we know, just like in the States, that... Now, there's other ways of consumption. Yeah. You don't have, have to be smoking. just a smoker. I mean, not everybody wants to smoke. It's not like you can sit there at your office and light up a joint. No. Exactly. So it's, it's a two-way street. When you're at home, do as you will. When you're in your car, do as you will. But when you're at the workplace, you know what? Have a cookie. Have a candy. And, you know, we can ratio that off to... Anywhere from 5% THC right up to 25% THC. So, yeah, and we spoke about that last time. Yeah. So the, 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 the potency isn't going to be in, increasing drastically in, the, in, in the, the, the near future. I could see it increasing drastically over the long term. It, yeah, It has but already. Exactly, from, from the 70s from the to now. now yeah. Like... But I guess before good stuff used to be called Colombian. <laughs> like well, it was all the Colombian same. Sense Emilia at the time was the best. You look at like the Mexican pot. What is it? It's morphodite pot. There's still seeds and everything in it. Who yeah. wants to smoke that? Well, and the, the the big one that uh, they're always pushing on me over there is uh, M39. M39. The is garbage. That, is, is, it's garbage. I hate it. I <laughs> hate it. I hate it with a passion. And what I've found out on the street, uh, talking to uh, uh, a, like a, a pot dealer, is that this is the, 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 the specific strain that the triads and the, 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 the Chinese mafia like to use because it's easy. It, M39 stands for a month of edge, 39 days to bud, perfect. 
I was simple, again, easy, I, ready to go, and it's. I've it's, never it's, grown it. I don't think I ever will. I'll stick to my cushions. Yeah, well, that's the, the that right now is the big thing. Is oh, the not right. So I've been. It's not right now. I've been my master for, oh, oh, oh. for ten years. Ten years. I went to Afghanistan and got my own. Oh really? I did not know that. Yeah. Dude, there you go, guys. Learning something new here on uh, <laughs> Spitballing with JT. Uh, <laughs> but the thing that really floors me is just the drastic difference in drug policy from West Coast to East Coast. Because uh, even even like, though it's a with, federal program, but even though like, I'm, t- I'm talking about overall, just the the, the outlook. Uh, we got a commercial. The, the, from on your string, but don't worry, people will come back right in there. <laughs> so we're not on right now. It'll cut. It's thirty seconds, three seconds left. But uh, what was I saying now? Fuck, stupid new string commercial. Fuck my thinking up. <laughs> my hand. Uh, oh damn! You go it. back in your train of thought. But back to back ones. Wow. Uh, yeah, as far as the West Coast and the that, East yeah, Coast goes, yes, about. they're, you know, there's because this whole... Because you have safe injection sites on the West Coast. Yes. That's something that they've been trying to do here for, like, the past five years, and they can't get it passed through, through even the city. Well, it's a provincial issue. It's not a federal issue. Yeah. And that's a provincial matter. Yeah. Where this is where we got our, like, just in the United States, you got state laws, you got federal laws. Yeah, Here you but, got provincial laws, you got federal laws too. But does the federal law supersede the provincial law? Yes, it does. So even if marijuana was completely outright legalized on the West Coast. Which it's not. But which it's not. And this is just a hypothetical. It, the government could swoop in on anybody, no matter what, as long as it was RCMP. Yep. Wow, so See, I, that's why RCMP is the city cops in Vancouver. Well, no, there's city police <laughs> in Vancouver and RCMP. What I say to everybody out there is, hey, you know what? Everybody, open a compassion club. Yeah. You know, you want to make some money? You want to get in there quick and get out? Open up a compassion club. They're not touching them. My mother thinks I'm doing it. Uh, yeah. or that I should do it. Hey, like, everybody thinks we're doing it at the clinic here, and all they're trying to do is help people. You know, they I think know. it's pot dispensing. You know, it's like, no, we're not dispensing no, pot. No, they're not dispensing pot. But as soon as the government allows something like that to happen, you're more than willing to go there. Well, it's, it's not like I'm not, but we didn't set this clinic up. For that. For dispensing. Dispensary. This has it's been This has been two years in the making. Yeah. It's not, you know, Jordan, it's not something that, like, people have got to understand. Where's the family doctor? Exactly. Okay, let's go back just a little bit in time. I want to be able to go to my doctor, someone that knows me, something, somebody I can talk to. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like taking your car to a different mechanic. They're going to find something wrong with it. Every mechanic finds something. Just like a doctor, you go to a a walk-in clinic, you see Dr. Jones one day. Next time you go, you see Dr. Anderson. Next time you go, you see Dr. Smith. You know, like, uh, and, and everybody's got a different way of treating you. Yeah. The minute you mention marijuana, oh, forget it. They, they, they shut the doors on you. Well, this is, and I'm, I've found this I would, a, a difficult way dealing with my car accident because a lot, uh, because I was using medical marijuana since my hepatitis C days, it's been a, a factor in my life. I, I haven't had depression since the, the, the I started using, uh, and I started using because of the Pegatron, which was a, a, an experimental trial that they put uh, a bunch yeah, of... It was the interferon Pegatron treatment yes. that they have yeah. for the so-called cure of hep C. Yeah. They said I'm negative, so I guess it, it worked for me, so I can't really bitch and moan about that. But they didn't tell me the side effects. They didn't tell me that it was going to make me suicidal, homicidal, ready to shoot somebody at the drop of a hat. So when my mother was confronted with this, she didn't know what to do. She didn't know, well, do I put them on antidepressants and see what that does to them? 
But what does that do? That's another chemical. Exactly. And then again, that chemical alters your, your mind exactly. and body again. And that's so why our, she let me choose my treatment. Our bodies were not designed to take all these medications. No, we're not. Okay, like first and foremost, I mean, our body does contain endocannabinoids. Yes, and, and so, the receptors for them. And what we have in our bodies that, that produced this naturally is part of our defense mechanism that is contained in marijuana. Yes. It is one of the, two of the properties that are in there. Mm -hmm. So by extracting that out, that's the part that gets to the cancer. That's the part that gets to the disease. Okay, right. the high is one thing. Okay, yeah, put that, and, and put that, that aside. Trying to get get a, better to first. Get, to get to the point. Yep, get so better first. Then worry about <laughs> sedation know. and all that nonsense. Exactly. Just worry about getting better, getting well, getting back on your feet, and then worry about it. Well, the thing is, that's why I said this has got. You know, I'm not against and that's recreational. Why you guys have physiotherapy and everything available here, right? Well, we got physiotherapy. We have uh, dietitians. We have psychiatrists, yeah. psychologists. We got naturopaths. Well, I, I mean, I, I which is better than a natural body. form yeah. of taking care of your body than polluting it with all the garbage that we are polluting and, it in? And I've become really big into the the health thing with. Uh, being a fan of the Joe Rogan podcast, he got me into kettlebells, and I'm pretty sure anybody else who's a Death Squad fan realizes that uh, they've started to take just little steps at, at first in the right direction for appropriate health. I've even started with uh, coconut oil and, and using, uh, mm -hmm. I have, a, I, do, I buy the Bulletproof Executive Coffee put that through a, a K-cup machine into my Starbucks thing, put a, a spoonful of coconut oil. I add a little bit of sugar because I don't like to do it too much because sugar is it's not the greatest. But then they say to add butter, but I, I think that'll be too slippery for me going down my throat. So I just use regular cream, mix it up and then shake it like a, I put it in a container and just shake it up so it's nice and foamy best coffee I've had in a while and I was go from pot to coffee three weeks I've been um, well diet <laughs> diet diet three weeks I've been on this type of coconut oil and coffee, coffee high diet. coffee high <laughs> I've lost 15 pounds wow in three weeks that's scary no it's it's healthy well 15 it, pounds it, is a lot of weight but it it, it, it was it's not, it's not like before what I was having all the time with the, the, the opiates and whatnot, I was getting bunged up a lot. I couldn't take a shit if my life depended oh, on it. No. And I, I was getting worried. So I, that's when I started to incorporate the, the coconut oil into my diet and that's made me a regular finally for the first time in my mm -hmm. fucking and life. And how many people out there are, right now are going through the same thing? Oh, a with billion, not just, a, a not billion just at least. You know, oxys with Tylenol threes, Percocets. Oh yeah, because you know the like, Demerol, the morphine. I mean, it's a, it's all the same family to me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's addictive, very addictive. If the doctor Extremely can't addictive. look at you in the face and say, "Don't, oh, no, no worries, you're not going to get addicted." Yeah. I mean, I who's I'm lying? Not, I, I'm, I, I'm not lying to myself. I know I'm physically addicted because I know if I don't have my medication for that day. I'll start to go through the actual physical withdrawal, True. which I, I want to avoid to the fullest, which I have a step above everybody else because my mom knows how to deal with this kind of stuff and she knows what to do and how to ease. Well, you're one the, of the lucky ones yes, that do. Yes, I mean, I'm extremely lucky that, to have that scenario in my household. That has a mom that'll take care of that, that knows exactly, about the addictions exactly. and that can help you along with it. A lot of people out there don't. I, I know that. And don't and know where to turn. Friends. They don't know where to go. They don't know who to phone. Uh, and this is what the clinic, again, represents. Yes. It represents, if nothing else, information. Yes, you not can, information you about how to grow them. pot or anything like that. You're no. not going to get that from me here, okay? No, those are just trade <laughs> That's not, not you're going to get. I, you want to get trained in growing pot? Come to VC. I'll let you work at one of my locations, and I'll teach you how to grow pot and appreciate it. Yes, but that's besides the point. 
<laughs> but uh, first and foremost, let's get back to the clinic. It was pretty much done for that reason that people can call. They can ask whatever questions that they have in regards to their bodies, what they can do to help themselves. Because if anybody wants off the addictions, you're going to want to be the one that wants to be off it. We can only help you so much. And we can say all we want about marijuana, what good it can do to people. But sometimes you got to give your head a shake and say, okay, I've got to try this. I've got to do this to get away from the opiate addictions because yeah. it's going to cause society a big, big headache. Oh, it, it, it's already starting to, to cause those headaches. And you, you can see it in the day-to-day -day, uh, people who walk by this place. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I've done it. I've, I, uh, my, my, uh, my, my pharmacist is on Danforth as well. And just the people that line up for methadone, I, I can't go to the pharmacist in the morning because it's just a lineup. Well, everybody's there for their methadone. Exactly. You know. It's, it's, but I it's mean, a, you know what it reminds me of is uh, I'm not sure if they, I wasn't obviously I wasn't around for World War II, but like when they used to get the Jews to line up to get executed. Okay. It's like. A, that's the morning on the Danforth, is you see everybody lined up to get their methadone. It's like mm -hmm. World War Two. All these people lined up at soup kitchens and shit because you're, you you got a star of David on your jacket. Like the Jews were in the Holocaust. Like you you can only eat at this soup kitchen. This is a Jewish soup kitchen. You can't convert with the Germans at all, or or segregation with the blacks and the whites. Yeah, this is a white only establishment, but. Blacks have to go stand outside and wait on, wait in line at, at the pharmacist or something. Well, that's still going on. Believe it or not, in oh, certain yeah. parts oh. of the states, that still goes and, on. And, Just and like certain Canada. parts of the states, they think that we live in igloo still, you know. Yeah. But that's uh, that's fine. Come but, on up and see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So uh, is that all you, we want to cover today? Well, I mean, as far as covering that much of it from the last broadcast to this one what i think know. we're going to do is uh every month or so we'll, we'll do a broadcast from here that way people can see what's going on well i'd, I'd like for people it, if anything else to, to come down here yeah well not just to come down here that's one thing uh, get on Twitter and tweak them, tweak Jordan and ask questions. And you know yeah, what, if without- you have anything that you want to ask Sam personally, send it to me and I will ask him and I will do a tweet his reply or we'll do another podcast if I have enough, uh, if I have a flood of requests or something, we could do a whole nother show where it's just, let's take questions for Sam Malachi, so. <laughs> That's Sam Malachi, but- Malachi. <laughs> But that's okay. Give me a break. I, I'm giving you a break. I'm giving you a break. Look, I haven't twisted one up in a while either. Okay, give me a break. <laughs> I could use one. If yeah, there's anything you need to know in regards to what is happening, at least with the program in Canada, I'll try and help you with the best I can. And if it's on a personal note, you can go to sammalachi.com, M-E-L-L-A-C-E. And there is dot com. a Twitter account. For the clinic, it's... Uh, the clinic's separate. From that? Yeah, well, samalachi.com is... That's no, where no, I can no, help there you. There was... Uh, Info uh, at newagemedicalclinics.com. Oh, uh, okay. So the, then just don't the, don't search Twitter. Just ignore the, the, the Twitter searches. Because uh, there's one thing that pops up. <laughs> Yeah, there is, sure. but if, like I said, people that need anything answered or yeah. need to know something about their feed, their fertilizer, what they're doing wrong or what they could be doing wrong, everybody's got their own technique. I've been in and around this industry for close to 40 years, so I know quite a bit about it. And if there's anything you need to know. So Puff Mama, Spoiled Smokers, all you guys out there, don't be afraid to... Uh, give us uh, some uh, questions because I know you guys also do a podcast where you guys address more of the recreational side of pot use and uh, maybe then uh, we could do a team up. All right. 
So the hats out from spitballing with JT. This is JT. Take care, everybody. Sam Alachi saying hello and goodbye, and God bless you all. All right. Keep talking. From rheumatoid arthritis, I take powerful painkillers, but medical marijuana works better. I have a license. JDB says marijuana is not a legit form of medicine due to the negative side effects. Getting high is merely a coping mechanism. Chloe says, I do. It alleviates the harsh symptoms of many ailments with less lethal side effects than many of today's pharmaceutical options. And Angela says, my dad was so desperate to control his pain at the end of his life that he asked for it. If it helps, why not? And you've been getting a lot of media attention. Oh, quite a bit. So what are we doing today, Sam? Today we're going to, due to Olivia being overwhelmed with uh, the recent events mm -hmm. and the movie and things, she could not attend. I'm dedicating this clinic to Jacqueline. We've had some personal conversations, and uh, this is what's led me to open up this clinic. Well, and you know, I worked with Jack, and we were on the float for Pride, and that was I forgot we did that. But Jack and Olivia, I worked. I worked in Olivia's office. I um, um, worked with Jack with the NDP. But as my campaign in 2010 in Ward 27, I took a position on increased access to health care, supporting the Toronto Drug Strategy, um, and there was a sort of changing the marijuana laws. Now, with this administration of City Council, and with the federal administration under the Conservative government, we're not going to get it. But because uh, Jack may be gone, but we can continue the work. Oh, yes. Huck. I'm not going to stop. I had three meetings with Jack, and I'm not going to stop. I, the man was just so understanding that he knew exactly what was to happen. I only wished I could have helped him. That's all I wish. Well, you know, and so the torch has been passed to another generation, and so it's up to us to pick up that torch and take it the next step, uh, take it the next stage of the relay. So, uh, good luck. Thank you. Would you mind? More? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> You did get dressed up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ready? I'm uh, as ready as I'm going to be. Oh, that's supposed to help with this. Well, you know I've never done this before, right? this work together. Does anyone want to come in the picture and take can a picture you just, with us? Just, just, you want us to be in the frame, eh? This is lovely. Thank you so much. That works. Great. Yeah. Now, like I told you, I'm not playing games about this information. You're going to get up on Con lo terrorista. I'm Shake has gone viral since it first appeared on YouTube back on February 2nd, being seen more than 60 million times. But what's important to note here is that the Harlem Shake's only words are with the terrorist or we are with the terrorist in Spanish rhythmically over and over and over again. And that's fine. It's a joke. We've many times made the point that they use Homeland Security against marijuana smokers, Amish people selling raw milk. And so the joke is, oh my gosh, look at those evil Amish, they're with Al-Qaeda. I get the joke. My point is, is that when school children go to school and sing this in English, as people are now doing, I'm with the terrorist over and over again, like Gangnam Style, hey, sexy lady, will they be thrown in jail? We're seeing 
10-year-olds and 8-year-olds charged with probation officers and going to trial for having water guns and cap guns and just playing with their friends. We're seeing people expelled from school or the police being called for Nerf guns or Hello Kitty bubble guns that project bubbles. Why is the hypocrisy getting so over the top? It's because the establishment is setting the precedent to selectively enforce their thought police edicts. If the globalist mouthpieces of Hollywood and the music industry want to push anti-family, violent garbage and promote mass murder and killing, that's okay. If a song wants to say, we're with the terrorist, it's just a joke. But when your child's in the front yard playing with a Nerf gun, it's not. When your child talks to friends at school and says, let's go play with water guns after school, here's mine, they're going to get arrested and charged. This is part of the thought police system, where they're above the law and they selectively set the rules. So you have been warned. And here's an example of that. Uh, I was reading a Billboard article with the creators of this uh, particularly catching jingle, and they said, we put it out there, we want people to use it, we've told people to use it, but if we choose, we'll block it and claim copyright. That wouldn't hold up in court, but they don't care. Most people don't know their rights, so who knows? They may even block this video because we were mildly critical. In closing, the Harlem Shake and things like Gangnam Style are part of an arrested development promotion system where the social engineers want to basically freeze development of men and women at the age of about 12 year olds so that we never become serious focused adults. And having a good time has a place, but you're not supposed to do it 24 seven. A free people have a serious and focused mind. I'm Alex Jones reporting for InfoWars.com.